Hello everyone and welcome whack. Welcome back to the final fight to Let me try this again. Hello everyone and welcome back to Final Fight 2's final level. We are in Japan now and hey look it's the mines. I don't believe we've seen those since stage 3. And they only appear very briefly in this stage as well. If you forgot that environmental hazards were even a thing, I wouldn't blame you. The most important thing about this stage is not the level design or the enemy layouts or anything like that. The most important thing here is that now we are playing on expert mode, and all expert mode means is that the enemies have like twice to three times as much health, and I hate it. I'm actually very positive. I could be wrong. I doubt it. But I'm, I'm very positive that they didn't even test expert mode, because this is so mind-numbingly boring. Now granted, you didn't see me play through the whole game up until this point, but you saw how long the Andori fights could take, and they take two to three times as long now. It takes so much time to get rid of even the most basic enemies. This stage is longer than any of the other stages because it's the last one, and it feels like the length of an entire movie. It's not that long, but hell if it doesn't feel that long. Look at Leon's health bar. That's a little bit ridiculous. I mean, it's still shorter than everyone else's because that's what his enemy type is like, but goddamn. So, the name Expert Mode is entirely misleading. It has nothing to do with how good you are at playing the game. It rather, uh, it rather is difficult because of the boredom involved, and allow me to explain. It's possible to get so bored playing Expert Mode that you start to perform poorly, and that's where most of my lives went. I got so tired of replaying all of the levels with enemies that have twice to three times as much health as before. And before you say I could have just played on expert mode from the beginning, yes, I could have, but this is what people would have done when they first bought the game. Because they would have chosen normal mode at first, because why wouldn't you, it's called normal mode. And then they would find out they have to play expert mode, so they would play it a second time. What I'm experiencing is what people back when this came out experienced. And you can see here, I'm obviously decent at the game. I stepped my game up because this is my recording, so I wanted to make it look good. But obviously, I'm pretty decent at the game. I'm not the best Final Fight 2 player, I'm sure. But, but giving the enemies more health doesn't make it more difficult. I haven't been hit yet. If there is a difference in the enemy's artificial intelligence, then I haven't noticed it. It could be there, but if it is there, then it's so minimal that, I, that I'm not even aware of it. And just to be completely clear, just to make everything as, uh... Just to make everything as transparent as possible. Yes, this game would be more tolerable if I played on expert mode from the start. But this final level would still frustrate the hell out of me. It takes so damn long. The health that this Andore has right here, I think this is how much health the bosses should have. I think giving Andore Jr. this much health is ridiculous. This goes beyond pattern recognition or simply understanding the enemy's behavior, it's just mind-numbing. Like, I know how to deal with Andore. Do you know how many Andores I fought on my way here? I don't, because there are more Andores in Expert Mode. Yeah, they changed the enemy layout slightly in Expert Mode, so now there's twice as many Andores, and a lot of them take this long to defeat. This shouldn't be happening, Capcom. You're Capcom. Come on. I understand beat-em-ups aren't the most profitable genre or anything, but I like to think people expected better even back in 1993. His health is barely budging. Now if you could just imagine me doing this same thing but for another 20 minutes or so, then I think you've got the final stage down. It takes much less time in co-op, but I don't have someone to play this with and I don't think anyone would want to. Maybe on normal mode, but like this, no, absolutely not. So after we beat Andore Jr. here, we're going to skip to the final boss, and, and I mean... I, there's no... I don't even have to excuse it. It's just this, over and over. Why are you still alive, Andore? How are you not bleeding everywhere? Right, so like I promised, it's final boss time, and Ray 2 is one of the most boring, stupid, insulting final bosses I've played in any beat-em-up. And this would be excusable normally. Like, yeah, it's really dumb that I can do this to the final boss. This shouldn't be a thing. But no, after playing through the game twice, I'm gonna rip the hell out of this boss's design even more than usual, because... Uh... 
So the idea behind Reitu is solid in theory. He hops around a whole lot and doesn't stay on one plane for very long, and he has one attack that he really likes to use, that spin kick, that kind of looks like a desperation move. He has a few variations of that spin move, one where he spins mostly in place, another one where he slides a deceptively long range across the screen, and another one where he chains two together. That last one is the most unexpected and can be really devastating. The problem is that we can counter all of his spin moves with a jump kick. In fact, we can counter all of his moves with a jump kick. I understand that you want to provide a weakness, right? A way to counter his spin move, and, and that's fine. But there has to be a balance somewhere. I shouldn't be able to just do this the whole fight. Did you not expect me to think strategically while I was fighting the boss? Like, did you expect me to have my brain entirely turned off? Because I played through expert mode, right? That's the idea here. Expert mode was so boring that by the time I get to the final boss, I'll just have my brain completely turned off. Except that's stupid. Because when Ray 2 does hit you, he deals so much damage that you have to think strategically. So you ask yourself, what's the way I could kill him and take the least amount of damage? Well, congratulations, I found the optimal fucking strategy for you. If you ever do get hit or die while using this strategy, it will be because you got so fucking bored that you jump attacked him a little too early or tried to hit him normally. Oh my god. You know, I've had friends and a couple of other people tell me, y you shouldn't cheese games like this, it's wrong, or, or get frustrated because I exploit the bosses like this. That's stupid. Could you imagine if a fighting game were this unbalanced, if you could cheese out a fighting game this way? People would call it a joke. They would hate the damn thing. It would be beyond moronic. I shouldn't have to make believe that a game is challenging. If a game is challenging, it will be challenging no matter what I do with it. That's why it has rules. I'm not breaking the rules. I'm still using its rules here. If I put in a cheat code to make Ray 2 dumb as hell, then I would understand people complaining, right? But I'm not doing that. I'm using one of the most basic moves available to you. You have three basic offensive capabilities in this game. And this is fucking Capcom, not Capcom now, where people think down about them all the time, alright? This is Capcom in the 1990s. What the hell? You know, when I played games, when I played games years ago like this, I would just assume, I would just assume by default that the developers were smarter than this. Like, I would just assume that I couldn't cheese out the final boss with jump kicks, because why wouldn't the developers think of that? It would be stupid to try. But now I try cheesing the bosses by default, because I realize I can't assume things like that. God damn, okay, let's take a break and talk about some actual strategy in this fight. The left side of the screen gives you more room to move because of the way the scrolling works. So if you're on the right side of Ray 2, then you have significantly less room to jump kick, which is why he was able to punch me there. Staying on the left side the whole fight is definitely more beneficial. And now normally to extend this brief break from me complaining about this terrible design, I would uh, I would bring up Ray 2's backstory, except he kind of doesn't have one. He's actually the most boring character in the game. It's just, his motivations are never clearly, uh, are never clearly fleshed out. He kidnapped Guy's fiance as revenge for the for the destruction of the original Mad Gear gang. But he's not in the original Mad Gear gang. I get yeah that they didn't think that far ahead, but they should have found some way to connect him to it and not be so vague about it. Especially with how much effort they put into making a consistent universe. I mean, it's in fluff, sure. But do you guys have to be lazy about that? So if you were hoping to find out exactly what relationship Ray 2 had with Rolento, then no, I'm sorry. Uh, Rolento's character in this game is really weird, and Ray 2's relationship with him is never, uh, it's never made clear. You see how I tried to grab Ray 2 and he kicked me? Don't grab Ray 2, just keep kicking him in the face. So you may have recalled two videos ago, I mentioned that the timer in most beat-em-ups is to stop you from being overly methodical. I am being the absolute laziest I can be in this boss battle. Like, I am taking the most slow, methodical method to avoid taking damage here. So you figure if if they didn't want me to exploit him like this, the least they could do is make the timer run down, right? The timer's still at 50 fucking 5. Now, I, I will come out and say, you know, having a timer to stop you from being overly methodical is kind of lazy. It's a lazy way to stop stop bosses from being exploited. But it works, you know? 
And especially in games with special attacks or, e or moves that you can easily cheese enemies with, it can help. And it at least stops you, right? The timer at least stops you from exploiting enemies, so it's part of the design and it works as intended. The timer doesn't do anything in this game. If the timer were faster, I might not be able to do this. Did they even, like, think? I don't think they thought about this. It seems so simple to me, and I'm I'm not a game designer. Y you specifically put this game together in a way that was meant to be challenging, right? That's why I have a health bar, and that's why Ray 2 deals so much damage. So how did you not think of this? Oh, it's over.